on this episode of Dumb Shit That Happens on the Internet. We're going to be talking about women's Olympic boxing. If you guys are on social media or just online at all, I feel like you know what's going on because there is a huge debate as to whether or not these two women boxers should be allowed to box women. The two boxers that we're talking about are Aman Khalif and Lin Yu Tang. Now, I have absolutely no idea if I said their names right, and I apologize if I was wrong, but there's a lot of controversy going on. And at first, I saw some tweets that I just bought into immediately talking about them being trans and allowed to compete in women's boxing. And I thought that that was crazy. And I understand that some people don't agree with that, but that is my stance on it ever since the Leah Thomas swimming situation, where as a man, he was placing around 500 something, and as a woman, he was killing everybody. So it's really hard to convince me that there is not an advantage. And we're talking about a sport where you punch each other in the face. I feel like it's even crazier. But come to find out, Aman Khalif and Lin Yu Ting are not trans. They deal with a certain syndrome. I wanted to dive in and get a better understanding of what it was because I don't really understand it at all. And I didn't want to just jump out the window and say this, this, and this when I really don't get it. So this is what I found out. Swire syndrome is a rare disorder characterized by the failure of the sex glands to develop. Swire syndrome is classified as a disorder of sex development, which encompasses any disorder in which chromosomal, gonadal, or anatomic sex development is abnormal. Girls with Swire syndrome have an XY chromosomal makeup, as boys normally do, instead of an XX chromosomal makeup, as girls normally do. Despite having the XY chromosomal makeup, girls with Swire syndrome look female and have functional female genitalia and structures, including a vagina, uterus, and fallopian tubes. Girls with Swire syndrome lack sex glands, ovaries. Instead of sex glands, women with Swire syndrome have gonadal streaks, in which the ovaries do not develop properly and are replaced by functionless scar tissue. Because they lack ovaries, girls with Swire syndrome do not produce sex hormones and will not undergo puberty unless treated with hormone replacement therapy. Mutations in several different genes are known to cause Swire syndrome. This condition can occur as the result of a new gene mutation or can be inherited in an autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, X-linked or Y-linked manner. Now, obviously that brought up all sorts of questions because the XY chromosomes mean that you're a man, as far as I've always known. So you would assume that these people are men, which is exactly what a lot of people on Twitter are saying. And I'm not here to say that they are or they aren't, but I did dive deeper to get a better understanding. And I just want to present you guys the facts because I'll be honest with you, with all the facts, I'm still in a gray area. I really don't know. This is something that I've never considered, something I didn't even know about. So one thing I came across was something that said the presence of XY chromosomes alone is insufficient to define someone as male. Primary and secondary sexual characteristics also play a role. According to the Superior Institute of Health, primary sexual characteristics include gonads where reproductive cells and sex hormones are produced. Secondary characteristics such as voice timber, hair distribution, muscle mass, and breast development appear at puberty and accentuate differences between males and females. So basically what they're saying is just having the XY chromosomes does not mean that you're a male. You have to cover a few different bases. Now, somebody with Swire syndrome technically does cover one of those two extra bases, and it's having gonads. The only thing is they're not functional. As far as the other part, the hair distribution, the muscle mass, or breast development, that happens at puberty, and somebody with Swire syndrome doesn't really go through puberty unless they get hormone replacement therapy for either male or female. So knowing this and that puberty is where a lot of that difference takes place, I started to look to see if there was much of a difference before puberty. And I'll be honest, I found a couple of different studies. Some kind of said there was a small difference. Some said there was no difference. It really depends on where you look. I don't know if they've done enough testing on this, but one of the things I did find and I saw pretty consistently was that before puberty, sex differences in athletic performance are minimal. Significant differences emerge at puberty around 12 years due to anabolic effects of testosterone in males. Testosterone levels rise 20 to 30 fold in males during puberty and are 15 times higher in males than females by age 18. So it seems like as a kid, there's not really that much difference, which is why sometimes you see women bullying men and you don't see that very much as people grow older because the men can obviously defend themselves differently. So as of right now, based on that little bit that I've read so far, it makes it seem like this probably isn't that big of a deal, but it depends. Did they take testosterone for males or estrogen for women? Or what did they do to put themselves through puberty? Because they obviously went through it. They're pretty tall. And somebody with Swire syndrome does tend to get tall, which is interesting to me because all the stats that I could find online made it seem as if they have very low testosterone. They're not like raging with testosterone because they were born with an XY chromosome because that part of their body just doesn't function properly. And when they were in the fetus, their body didn't take to the testosterone, which is why they kept their female parts. 
So there's just a lot of gray area where I'm like, okay, so does that mean that there really is no advantage? She's tall because that's how everybody with Swire syndrome tends to be, but it doesn't mean that she has the muscle mass, the twitch fibers, all that stuff that a man has because puberty was never there. She never got that burst of testosterone. And honestly, even if she did, her body doesn't respond to testosterone in the same way that a normal person's does. So I, I, it, it becomes so confusing. And then I obviously wanted to look up just to see exactly what testosterone does. Direct and indirect effects of testosterone during male puberty include increased skeletal muscle mass due to large muscle fiber, cross-sectional area, especially fast type two fibers, lower percentage body fat, higher hemoglobin concentration in mass, larger ventricular mass and cardiac volumes, larger airways and lungs, greater body height and longer limbs. But then I started to ask myself questions that I can't necessarily find the answers for because there's just not a lot of studying done in this area. But let's just say that when a person with Swire syndrome gets to the age of puberty and they decide not to take any replacement therapy and completely just allow themselves to skip puberty, they're still gonna grow somewhat, right? Like it's not like they're just gonna stay that child forever or people would try to do that and just always be a kid. So I started wondering like what happens if you don't go through that? Does that mean that you're going to still have some advantages over a woman because technically you were born with the XY chromosome? Does it mean that you're gonna be weaker than both because you've never gone through anything? I don't really know exactly what that means and I couldn't find many answers on it. And the reason why I thought that that was pretty important because that would let us know a little bit more about whether this is fair or unfair because even if they didn't go through puberty as a male, even if they didn't respond to testosterone, I wanted to know if there would still be some type of advantage from having the XY chromosome. And I figured that the only way I could definitely find that out is if I found out what happens if you completely skip puberty, if you don't get the hormone replacement. Do you still get the advantages? Do your bones still grow bigger? Does any of that happen? Even if it's on a smaller scale because there's no testosterone, does it still happen? Because to me, that would then be a big deal. So it, it just, it depends and there's just, there's so much gray area. Now, another thing that I found because I thought it was important to look up was what happens when you're a fetus? Are we exactly the same until our bodies and our chromosomes bring us in one direction or the other? And it does say that all human individuals, whether they have an XX, an XY, or an atypical sex chromosome combination, begin development from the same starting point. During early development, the gonads of the fetus remain undifferentiated. That is, all fetal genitalia are the same and are phenotypically female. So this I found interesting because if we all start from the same place, if all genitalia is phenotypically female, and then what happens is the gonads release testosterone, I believe, or it, it's something to do with the gonads, and the body responds to it and then slowly changes into what ends up being a male because of the XY chromosomes. But if your body doesn't respond to that testosterone, you obviously are going to remain a woman, and that's regardless of the XY chromosome. So that's, again, more confusion for me because in all reality, it's basically saying, yes, you got the chromosomes that should make you a man, but because your body didn't respond to the testosterone, it went the women route. And if that's the case, then there shouldn't be much of an argument, right? You would assume that this is okay, that she's fighting and that she's just good based on her being good. And in all reality, she's not really that good. Her, her record's not that great. But as far as winning the fight that she won so far in the Olympics. Now, I already know some people are probably upset typing down there like, it's a man. I don't know what you're saying. You're spinning the truth. I'm not even saying that it's okay yet. I'm just giving you what I thought as I came across each piece of this. And at the very end, I'm gonna give you my final thought on everything. So something else that I came across was the IOC's position. The IOC clarified that all athletes in the Paris 2024 boxing tournament must comply with eligibility and medical regulations. Specifically, section 3.1 of the rules requires a medical certificate stamped and signed by a competent medical authority within the previous three months. Khalif's tests ahead of the Olympics showed no abnormal testosterone levels. So basically going into this fight, her testosterone levels were no different than any of the other females. They were all within range. And I don't know if it matters to say this as well, but a lot of people were saying that they were trans or just all sorts of different stuff and apparently all of that seems to be pretty illegal in Algeria so it's definitely not a trans person undercover it's not any of that it is literally somebody with a syndrome that should have been born a male but ended up being born a woman so that was just some of the stuff that I read I read through hours worth of shit and I tried to grab the stuff that I thought was most important to share with you guys and I don't know where I stand. I would say that I probably lean towards her actually just being a woman and not really having any advantages, even though she has the XY chromosome, which I was completely against at first. I didn't think that that was the case. I didn't think it was possible, but the more that I researched it, the more that it kind of points in that direction. At the same time, I don't know that they've done enough research. Do we know 100% that having the XY chromosome itself, even without the testosterone at puberty or any of that would not change anything else in the body? 
That's what I need to know. Because if that XY chromosome does mean that even though it's gonna be minor differences, it's still going to be pushed as an advantage against other women because it's an XY chromosome and the body is going to build differently, then that is a problem. And I feel like this person shouldn't be able to compete. And I know that that's unfortunate and it's it's not fair, but this is the way that life is sometimes. Some people are born handicapped, right? It's an unfortunate thing. It's not something you choose and they might wanna play basketball. They could try to play handicap basketball, but they're not gonna play in the NBA. It's just, it's just the way that it is. And I know that it's not fair, but life isn't fair to a lot of us. Let's just be completely honest. Lately, I've been dealing with something called Proctalgia Fugax. I'm gonna share my butthole story with you guys, okay? I could be sitting here doing perfectly fine, nothing wrong. All of a sudden it feels like a knife was shoved up my asshole, okay? It sucks. It's not all the time, thankfully, an episode pops up like once a year, once every other year for a little while, and it's been pretty rough this time. It's not fun. I didn't choose this life, okay? But it's happening to me. Life is not always fair. So I'm, I'm not trying to compare because obviously it's something that comes and goes. I can live my life perfectly fine. But all I'm saying is that life isn't fair to everyone in some way. So basically this was a video just to give you guys the information for those of you guys that may not have wanted to research it and didn't know much about it. Maybe some of you guys know even more than I know and you guys can share that down below and help me out because I do feel like the one thing that matters is whether or not having an XY chromosome is going to change your body regardless of the fact that you don't respond to testosterone. You might not have went through puberty and became a male. You may not have had the testosterone. It may not have worked for you. But does that XY chromosome mean that your body is going to build itself slightly differently from a female body, regardless of the sex you know, hormone, all that stuff. Like that's different. I understand that that's not going to change. That's going to stay there. But did you get the same twitch fibers that a man has? Did your muscular structure become more like a man's, even if it's only a little bit? Because if it's more than a woman's, it's... Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that—that that is a thing that we have to look into. But if it's not, then I probably lean towards the side of a little bit of overreaction going on. I just don't have an answer to that, and I can't seem to find one. So I'm going to stay in the gray area and just say that this is just one of those things in life where I, I, I don't know. I really don't know. Because there's things that are pretty obvious to me. Trans women, women's sports separate you can't you can't it just does not make any sense leah thomas was the perfect example definitely not punching each other in the face but this is one of those situations where it's a very very rare thing that you just don't see very often and it just happens to be that two of them made it to the olympics and so now it's this big thing that we're going to debate on and i listen i'm not telling you to feel any type of way I, I most of the people that are against it like i'm with you guys on a lot of other topics i'm just i'm in the gray area on this because i always try to look at it logically and logically i can't prove one way or the other because it doesn't seem like there's that much information on it outside of it saying that they really don't have any advantage but again we haven't done all the proper tests i don't think at least all the proper research to to really know that so i guess in that situation you'd say that they shouldn't compete because we don't know enough but I'm not going to throw them under the bus. I just think it's an unfortunate situation for everybody, them included. So let me know what you guys think. I'll catch you in the next one, homies.